This is the Stick in the Mud Podcast, Episode 11. Today, we're talking about features MUDs should adopt from MMOs. Hey everyone, welcome to the Stick in the Mud Podcast. I'm your host, Tark. First time listeners, I'd like to say thanks for giving us a shot. Repeat listeners, I love you. The Stick in the Mud Podcast released once a week on Wednesdays, and notes of the show can be found at www.stickinthemudpodcast.com. You can find us on the iTunes and Google Play Music stores as the Stick in the Mud Podcast, and follow us on Twitter at Mud Podcast. And when I feel like doing it, you'll be able to catch us live streaming at twitch.tv slash mudpodcast. Feel free to leave comments about the show or the podcast in general on Reddit in the slash r slash mud subreddit. Any and all links are going to be in the show notes. So let's go ahead and start talking about MMOs and what muds could learn from them. So at this point, everyone knows what an MMO RPG is. World of Warcraft, EverQuest, Wildstar. Those are the first ones that come to mind for me. Oh, Final Fantasy XIV. Another excellent, excellent game. Now, obviously, especially today, MMORPGs are more popular than MUDs, you know, there's a bunch of reasons for that. One, well, graphics. As much as uh, we really do hate to admit it sometimes, people do like looking at nice, shiny things, and MMOs in general do tend to have a lower barrier to entry. With MUDs, well, being able to type fast, being able to process data quickly as it scrolls by on your screen at, well, as my wife likes to put it, matrix level speeds. It's pretty intimidating, especially because instead of just using WASD to move around, you type in north, enter, south, enter. A lot of things can just prove to be unintuitive. So with that, other quality of life, convenience, and just kind of upgraded gameplay features, there are places where I do think MUDs could stand to learn from MMOs and things that they could look to lift that would really improve the player experience just in general. First off, and this is one that I'm really surprised I don't think I've ever actually seen implemented in a MUD, is Rest XP. For anyone who's ever played World of Warcraft, Rest XP is what you get when you log out in an inn or in usually a faction safe area that provides a pool of future XP that you gain faster when you log back in. So, for instance, I want to say that it took somewhere in the neighborhood of about a week or so for rest XP to get equivalent to an entire level's worth of experience. I want to say that the gain on it was about one and a half times the rate of normal XP. And it just really made it nice that you didn't fall behind the curve of, say, friends or something too, too bad, at least back in, say, vanilla WoW. If you had to sit, you know, take a couple days, a week, two weeks off from the game due to whatever it was. Now, the benefits of Rest XP obviously are that you're not punishing your players for not playing your game. The leveling process, depending on the game, obviously, can already feel like uh, it takes a while, especially if you're unfamiliar with the game. So Rest XP is a good way of smoothing that out a little bit for folks and also making it to where You know, they don't have to spend every moment of free time they've got on the game leveling up to be able to get into stuff that much faster. Now, a lot of games do run double XP events, triple, quadruple, seeing insane numbers sometimes depending on the game. But it's just not quite the same as, I don't want to say being given a reward for not playing, but not being punished for not playing. The next thing that I really would like to see MUDs adopt And I have seen this kind of in some games. It's something similar to the job system from, say, the Final Fantasy Tactics series or Final Fantasy XIV itself. Now, the idea behind the job system is you have one character. That character is capable of being any of the classes in the game that they've either unlocked through a special quest, which does provide for potentially some interesting content for your players on the game. Or it's just something that's built in from the get-go. Now, the way Final Fantasy handles their job system is certain weapons go to certain classes. And if you equip the weapon of a certain class, then you become that class. Each class goes from level 1 to 50. 
just as far as how far you have to level up goes. And the really neat thing to me that kind of gets rid of some of the grinding there is that your highest level job is used to determine what, if any, sort of XP bonus you get towards leveling up other jobs. So if you've actually maxed out one of your jobs at 50, then I believe they give you a 50% XP boost as you're leveling up other jobs, which, especially if you have, say, a smaller player base or something like that, having players capable of adapting to multiple roles, not a bad thing. It's definitely something... I've kind of seen it in the Iron Realm games where they'll let you they'll let you switch classes. Typically, there's a fairly hefty timer involved, usually some sort of in-game or out-of-game currency investment, depending on the game in particular. They're OK. They could definitely be done. The systems themselves could be done much better, but the, it is there at least as an option just not a great implemented one yet. Now, something I'd really like to see from MUDs is a categorized inventory system. So what I mean is instead of typing inventory and there is all your things kind of gathered together and clumped, something more like type in inventory and there's a bunch of different headings for your output. Inside those headings are you know, the gear that belongs to them. Now. That'd be something like you type in inventory. Here's all the weapons in one section. Here's all your armor in another section. Here's random trash stuff, potions, buff items, quest items, things like that. Now, ideally, I would say that players ought to be able to customize those inventory categories to where they could have weapons and then weapons their character can actually use. Or same with, say, armor for magic items, ones that provide buffs, ones that provide debuffs, offensive items. I'm always in favor of allowing a player as much control possible over their experience. So, yeah, categorize inventory. Next up on my things I hate from MUDs, trash items and why they need to die. You know, I've always been in the pain that all the loot that you pick up in a game really should matter. And a lot of games take the, well, you kill something, you take its gear, and then you go sell it to a shopkeeper, and, you know, that's how you make money. Well, instead of that, I propose that instead currency drops get increased, as opposed to just having to haul around a ton of trash items and going and selling them. If you know you're sitting down to go kill the entire population of an orc village, you know, your gear is better than anything they drop there. You're doing it solely for the experience. And of course, the gold you'll get from selling the gear. But personally, I'm a big fan of cutting out the middleman in that aspect. And for games that have skills like haggle or something like that, you could just as easily implement something like your characters, you know, say they're a thief, they're better at finding spots on someone's body where they'll hide a couple extra coins, you know, inside the bottom of their boot, inside a sock, you know, whatever it is. And I think that it would make finding loot in that instance a lot more rewarding. Trash items are also something I've hated from games like WoW because it's it just serves to be sold to vendors. Again, just increase the amount of gold you're going to give me if you're going to sit there and have that. Something I would really love to see, and I've seen it maybe once or twice, I believe, again, Iron Realms games allow for something like this, is copying your character settings from one character to another. And for this, I'm talking about, say, oh, in a game I'm playing right now, you can set up auto loot, auto sacrifice, you know, pulling gold automatically, automatically assisting other people in your group when they get into combat. Now, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get that set up the way you want it. But other things, too, like coloring channels a certain way, having saves show up a certain way, characters in the room, all of that would really be nice to be able to just set it up on one character and then for subsequent characters that you decide to make, type in something like copy settings, character name for your original character, and then if they don't want people taking other people's settings for whatever reason, you know, add in a password requirement for the character you're copying from. Something like that 
again, is it's a huge just kind of quality of life thing where you're getting rid of, depending on the game, what could be maybe 30 seconds of work all the way out to, I mean, I know I've spent easily a half hour before configuring channels, what players show up as versus items in the room versus NPCs. And it just, again, not necessary, but nice quality of life feature. Now, this feature, I think a lot of people will either agree or disagree with, but I love the idea of having level sync in MUDs. And that's where a higher level character has their stats and abilities and whatnot leveled down to be equal to a low level character that they're grouping up with. I know when I've started on a game, higher level folks might come to help me. Uh, it's kind of disheartening watching them just one shot everything you go through because you're like, well, I'm I'm just sitting here. I could just be playing an idle game on my phone instead and it'd really be roughly about the, the same outcome. As much fun as idle games are, well, they're not super engaging. And if your game is not engaging, well, I don't know if people are going to really want to log back in for you. The other thing, too, is if your MUD does tend to be low population, having the high-level characters able to actually group up with low-level characters and get decent XP is a great way to build relationships between the established player base of the game and the new characters because, hey, someone's taking their time to come out and adventure with me and help me, and, you know, I'm contributing, too. You know, I'm not just sitting here watching them steamroll everything for me. So it gives players, you know, a sense of their own agency and well, helps them feel good and really, I would say, grows bonds between your community. All things that, well, MUDs could definitely use. Now, this one, I'm pretty sure other games out there have implemented this. I have not personally run into ones yet. And that should, could just be a lack of my branching out in the MUD community for a lot of years. But seeing true teamwork, group-based, end game content that doesn't have to be run by an administrator would be an excellent, excellent thing. Now, MUDs I have played in the past. Medivia was the big one that I played in the late 90s, early 2000s. They did have, you know, their high-level zones that required a group of nine people to run through, kill stuff, and, well, maybe gear-loaded. Maybe it didn't. Really, really similar to how MMOs work today. Since then, I haven't really run into any games that have that, where you have that end-level, gotta-get-a-group-together content that isn't being run by an administrator. Now, don't get me wrong. Admin events are great and a really fun way to interact with the game as a player as well as by the owner. But admins aren't really always going to be there, and... Well, players aren't always going to be there either. I know that during the Dark Rising's Halloween events, you know, I generally couldn't make them because, well, I believe they were set up for evenings or so east or west, east or central coast. Wow, I don't know my time zones, apparently. Central or east coast time. And I'm on the west coast. I usually don't log in until about 8 o'clock or so at night in my time which translates into 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in those time zones when a lot of people are winding down, getting ready to go to bed. Having stuff where players can go out and do it and not have to worry about, oh no, I couldn't show up for the admin thing, never gonna hurt you. So now, something that I think would really benefit a lot of games is easy item comparison. When you go and you kill that orc and you take his club, is it better than the short sword you got from a halfling? An hour ago? Well, most games, you sit, you cast Identify, you look at the stats, you cast Identify on another item, look at those stats, think about it, and, you know, it's just not easy to compare the two side by side. Ancelon, which I re featured recently on the live stream, actually had a really nifty thing with their Inspect command. When you inspected, it gave you the output of identifying the item, but then it showed you, say... This item has plus 10 hit points versus the other, and it just really made going, oh, hey, this is an upgrade. This is what I want to use. A heck of a lot easier in my book. So for anybody else listening out there that's got their own game, might not be a bad idea to take a page from them. Now, this next thing is something that I'm pretty sure has been around in games for quite some time, but I've never really run across it in MUDs all that often. That's talent trees. I love the idea of sitting down and making choices either with talent points 
skill points, whatever it is you want to call them, and having mutually exclusive options that you can either pick up or not. And with those, it really helps define your character strengths and weaknesses. Of course, this is strictly and mechanically sent. Role-playing-wise, you might be blind, but hey, you took the blind sight skill so you can still fight like one of those awesome monks from <laughs> any Chinese martial arts movie. Again, it's one of those things where it allows a ton of character customization, a lot of different builds that people can try out for characters, obviously having them able to be easily reset and maybe even including like a dual spec option. Not a bad idea. It's just one of those things where I have not personally run across it all that often in MUDs. So I wouldn't mind seeing more of them get that out there and help differentiate their warriors from rangers other than, oh, hey, rangers have a couple of nature spells. Instead, you can have three different subclasses within warriors that can kind of mix or match and make themselves fairly unique. Then you've got rangers have their three kind of subclass talent tree paths, etc., etc. Now, this is another big one for me. Auction house. Instead of just an auction channel or... A system where you put your item up for auction, it's up there for a minute, and then it's down and gone. A user browsable auction house can list items anywhere from, say, 24 to 72 hours. Players can go, look, see it's there, purchase it if they want it to. You receive your gold either as soon as you log in or it gets mailed, whatever your game uses for that. But it's something that makes it where if you're going to go and upgrade a piece of gear, and you've got some really awesome gear already, or hey, I'm done playing this character, or whatever the reason you have for selling something you picked up, it is valuable to somebody else, it's definitely worth trying to sell, then having a system in place to do that easily um, seems kind of like a no-brainer to me. Another thing to do with this too, to prevent people from just listing whatever garbage they find on there, is having the listing cost be equal to or even like one and a half times as much as the worth of the item if they sold it to a vendor. Something to consider there, I think. Now this is one odds are might take a little bit of flack for. I really, really want to see more games have procedurally generated areas that provide content. Probably the best example I have of this implemented in a MUD were dragons in Medivia. What you would do is, while you're out adventuring, you might find a map to a dragon's lair. Get together 17 other people. Obviously, these numbers could be adjusted today for lower mud populations, since we were talking anywhere from, I think, 400 to 800 people online back then. You find a map. It points to a dragon's lair. You go to the dragon's lair. And then you go down, and you fight through, I want to say typically it was about nine floors that was randomly generated, both with mob placement, room layouts, features that the rooms had inside of them, etc. And get your way down to the dragon, fight them, kill them, take their hide, make awesome items. That dynamically generated area that you had to go through, and each time, there were certain aspects, of course, that were copied, you know, from time to time. But, having various obstacles in the way and the different permutations they could be combined into really made for an interesting experience that required a lot more than just sitting there spamming cast earthquake, kick dragon, kick dragon ling. And it's just one of those things where I don't want to say it pads out, but it really pads out a game's content and can make a smaller game feel a lot larger than it actually is, which eh, never a bad thing. Now, I'm not really big on instanced content. I, I always feel that other players should be able to come and crash your party if they really want to, especially on games that have open or semi-open PvP. But, again, having that content there that lets players, why do you play Diablo? You know, it's not, it's, it's for that chance to get that incrementally better loot. You know, it's an awesome little Skinner box that, over time, tends to reward you. And seeing people get rewarded with, say, quest points on a lot of games are used to buy equipment or do other neat things for your character. Give, give out, say, 10 quest points for every time they manage to run their way through a procedurally generated area. Well, you've got people being logged in, wanting to earn stuff for their characters, and, well, hey, if we want to make it easier, let's group up and everyone go through this. Now, last, 
but definitely not least. And this is one that I know a lot of mods out there do have. I just think every mod out there could really benefit from implementing something like this is a user interface developed for their game in one of the bigger mud clients. Now, personally, I'm a mudlet guy. I like it because it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so I'm always going to be biased towards it. And the nice thing is, is having logged into God Wars 2, I know that games can push out packages to mudlet. Of course, obviously, you have to accept it. That then install and set up the user interface experience. God Wars 2 is a really good example of this. Their UI is phenomenal. Kavir did an excellent job when he was making it. I know there are other games out there that have their own as well. Most of them, I believe, use Mush Client for putting their stuff out there, which, eh, second-class citizens in my book, but hey, to each their own, I guess. But, yeah, you know, if you have a user interface developed for your players, especially for new players. It gives them kind of a streamlined experience where information is made readily available to them rather than having to dig through a couple different commands. Okay, here's my score, but that's not the same as my stats, which isn't the same as my buffs. It just makes that whole retaining people who do come from a graphical game background a lot easier because well, that information's right there on their screen. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Stick in the Mud podcast. I'd like to just take a minute to thank Opie over at funcity.org for being the sponsor behind the podcast, providing the necessary hardware and tech to make this happen. I'd also like to thank Sean Phillips for my rockin' intro and exit music. And I'd like to give a shout out to the folks over at Dark Risings, where I've been spending a decent bit of my time lately, really just enjoying their game and having a lot of fun with it. If you're looking for a good old school-ish ROM slash circle slash DQ mud to play around on, definitely give it a shot. I covered them in an earlier episode, and it's a game I've kept playing since playing it for review purposes. So thanks for tuning in, and developers, have fun out there stealing features from MMOs. 